if you take an antibiotic when you have a common cold or a viral disease, it changes your immune <coughs> system, the, the cytokine response from Th1 to Th2, which means after taking antibiotics for a common cold for a number of years, like our children do, you become an asthmatic. So we are manufacturing asthma. You probably have not seen that. A study in Bombay showed that the children in five star big hospitals, I mean the, the apartment, 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 <coughs> you know the apartments? Keeping people apart. <laughs> <laughs> You don't, they don't know who their neighbor is. Even if a neighbor dies, only when the smell comes after a week, you know that the neighbor is dead. And these apartments, vis a -vis, children on the street. Those children have called, the thing is coming out here, pus is coming out and the child is going around playing the same thing. Ten times more asthma in the high-rise buildings compared to those children. Ten times more asthma. Okay, asthma is alright, you can say treat. You get TH2 will produce vasospasm. So you get a heart attack, much more heart attack. Common cold and antibiotic is one of the causes of heart attacks. We don't think about it. Very interesting. <coughs> but we do that. Instead of that, you say minor illness syndrome. What is the treatment? Best treatment is homeopathy. There are three studies on two drugs in homeopathy. Aram trifilate, I mean ligrate. Fantastic results. Two days you are all right. But the latest research from Polindale, where it's a cold research center, common cold research center started in 1948, closed in 1998 after 50 years, saying that we have not made any progress in common cold research. We <laughs> spent 500 million pounds and they, we are converting this into AIDS research center. And the last paper said, if any one of you get cold next winter, go to an Indian restaurant and eat Indian curries. <laughs> because the research showed ginger, garlic and pepper in combination the most powerful antiviral drugs man has ever known. Who does the study? In Harvard. <laughs> My granny did that study. When I was a child, I used to get pepper. That's what we drank. I tell you something very interesting. How modernity comes. Our people think modern medicine comes from America. No. Modernity in English simply means you improve your antiquity to modernity, Indian modernity. Garlic, there are 45 studies. We said garlic is useless. What did they do? Garlic pearls. What is garlic pearl? Garlic without SH group. Because nobody likes that smell. Especially girls don't like that <laughs> Without SH group, it's not garlic. And garlic to be garlic and to be medicine must be eaten raw in the mouth. When you mix it, the garlic gets mixed with the strychnine in your saliva and the alanine in garlic becomes alicine which is a medicine, a very powerful medicine, much more powerful than your aspirin, tucramycin, your diclopidine and what have you. There is a very famous cardiac surgeon in New Zealand called Sir Brian Barrett Poise. He had a large uh, chunk of Asian patients in those days. He used to tell me, Professor Rigde, I don't give the blood thinners for my patients after a viral replacement. Because they eat so much of garlic and onion, their blood is always thin. He was right. And mind you, those days, I am talking of the 60s, we used to have cloth covered valves. If you don't give your warfarin, etc., the patient will die. But he never gave warfarin to Indian patients. The CAD audit now showed that if you lower your A1C level, the just uh, hemoglobin level, less than 6, you die very fast. Between 7 to 8, you live long. Beyond 8 also, you may die a little early. So, you must have higher sugar than what the doctor wants you to have. You are safer. And uh, uh, Dr. Grant will tell you after a heart attack, if you lower your sugar terribly, you will probably die faster. The heart likes little sugar. It enjoys the sugar. But sugar as such is bad in the long run. But in the short run, Hypoglycemia kills more people than hyperglycemia. Similarly, 17 studies on hyper, high blood pressure treatment over the years showed that those who took tightly drugs, they met their maker a little faster than others. Now there is a long study, 25 year study called the MR fit study, multiple <coughs> risk factor intervention trial. It's tightly controlled every so-called risk factor, so-called risk factor. 
the other side they just said do what you like. And after 25 years they found the what you like fellows are still alive. And these fellows have been all in heaven. <laughs> to see what happens to reassurance, we went so many systems room. A very hard study was mounted in Oxford, Cambridge, Hamburg and Munich. Severe cancer pain, severe pain. They ran a drip of morphia, the most powerful painkiller. But while running they said, this is not morphia, this is a new medicine we have found for cancer. It will not relieve your pain, but it will relieve your disease. Nobody's pain went. To be precise, 88% pain didn't go. Then they took the same patient, what's called the crossover study, ran a saline drip, salt water drip, and told the patient, this is the latest salt of morphia. Your pain will simply vanish. And pain vanished. They were shocked. Morphia in the vein, pain not gone. Salt water in the vein, pain gone. Then they repeated the study with the fMRI, concurrent fMRI. See what's happening. When the patient believed that this is morphia, because he believed his doctor, believed faith. The forebrain produced such powerful opioids, more powerful than morphia, pain disappeared. When the patient didn't believe or believed the doctor that it's not morphia, the forebrain slipped and nothing happened. So treatment is not effective, but the faith is effective. Did you understand that? So what does it matter, what system you have, homeopathy, allopathy, dhumapathy, whatever it is, simply sympathy, empathy, pain, which is called placebo in Latin, to make it a little more degree. You don't believe this, right, young lady, write down the placebo effect and you will know what is this happening in the world, where am I, you know, this is very interesting. So friends, what was the message that I want to send home. Your health is in your hands. Preserve it as long as you can. Did you understand? First go yes. to homeopath third company. <laughs> <laughs> Why I'm saying this is, this is the reality. This is the reality. That's why I have a suggestion for, for, for Raju. All industries give their, uh, their workers and others money to go for a checkup. Chuck-up is the most dangerous thing that you can do. The British Medical Journal has read to it. Regular chuck-up is the most dangerous activity that a man can ever do. Because you get an incidentaloma by checking up and it's called a cancer and you have given all cancer drugs and you meet your maker faster. In a way it is better. <laughs> Did you understand that? No, I'll tell you why. We don't have a definition of normal in statistical medicine. What we have is an average. Average is not normal, but we equate average with normal, which means we are taking the healthy population and applying this statistics. I'll tell you a very simple story. What is the normal height of an Indian male? We take 1000 males and the Gaussian curve, mean plus 2 standard deviation comes to 5.4. And then what we have done now, in society there are people who are 4.6, there are people who are 6.2 and there are 7.2, you know, fellows like uh, Kenneth Galbraith. Now all these are normal, quite deep. They are all covered in this Gaussian curve. But when we cut it into mean plus 2 standard deviation, 90% are wrong. Now you send for a chakka. Amitabh Bachchan comes for a chakka. Or why? Rajiv goes for a chakka. <laughs> Raju goes for a checkup or his father goes for a checkup, 6.2, ill, what's the treatment? Cut his leg, make him 5.4. <laughs> okay. 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 Or Jaya Bachchan goes for a checkup, <laughs> what's the treatment? Transplant her leg and make her 6.5. Can you believe that? This is exactly what we are doing. It's called false positives, false positives. That means every parameter that you check in the hospital, 25% of you will be false positive for one parameter. Today you go to a big hospital, they have got a total body scanner. 500 parameters are checked immediately. It runs. And then you come with also, my B12 is high doctor, my vitamin D is low doctor, my bone density is this doctor, my calcium is that doctor. 
But if it is one point this side, that side, you are told it is abnormal. And then, you know, one patient came to me, a rich man, but not, you know, English educated rich man. His ECG came out of the machine. These days, you know, ask your doctor, Grant. His machine itself writes a diagnosis. So the machine wrote borderline ECG. This man knew little English. So he said, Doctor, my border the heart is not on the <laughs> He saw four big hospitals for border. They said, Check his border. Can you believe that? So you become a neurotic after that. You become a patient. Either become a patient or a permanent neurotic. A cardiac neurotic is worse than a cardiac patient. <laughs> you can treat a cardiac patient, but can't treat a cardiac neurotic. I can wake up a man who is sleeping, but if you say I am sleeping, I don't want to wake up. Can I wake you up? <laughs> no, this is the problem. Our biggest problem now in medicine is anxiety neurosis. I tell you, how many people have anxiety neurosis? And we are very important doctors. We think the mind is in the brain. So we treat with the chemical drugs, mental disease. My brain is not in the mind. And what does the drug do? It damages the brain. So we get a zombie at the end of the day who is called Alzheimer's disease, another new disease. See? Isn't that good? And the professor of psychiatry in New York University, she wrote this book called Dementia, a drug in crime on mankind. Her name is Grace Elizabeth Jackson. Lost her job. Deported from America. But their book is getting her millions of dollars and she is very happy. She lives in Chile and goes around the world like Chile. How many of you are taking a sleeping pill? Your sleep is not in the brain, but the pill damages your brain. How many of you are taking a waking pill? Why do not take a waking pill? Or at least you take a couple of bags to sleep and another strong cup of Kumbhakonam coffee to wake up. <laughs> Kumbhakonam coffee is very good. 650 milligrams of KP in that coffee. So you wake up in the morning. But look at those people sleeping on the roadside. Ah, what a beautiful sleeper. Yesterday, you know, I slept at 1.30 in the morning and I couldn't get sleep because I am not used to sleeping. I was struggling to sleep and said, if I don't sleep now tomorrow morning, what will I do? Raju, Raju, Raju's place, what do I lecture now? Then suddenly I thought, Think of those as you as think of those people sleeping on the roadside. So happy and then I slept. Because you must always think of people who are worse than you. You should not think of people who are look at him, he is you know, sleeping eight hours. <coughs> I will never sleep. So compare yourself with the somebody who is below you and see how they live. I always tell people, you know, a lot of people are worried. They they are jealous of others. I have a simple formula where you'd be happy. Don't be jealous of anybody. Supposing I see a big, let's say, Rolls Royce car parked on the road, I'm so jealous. If I look this side, that side, nobody sees, I take a stone on the side. <laughs> <laughs> a, jealousy is killing me. Scratching that, further kill me. On the contrary, I can wait for the owner to come. Let's say Dr. Grant comes and I say, Dr. Grant, what a beautiful car you have got Cha, the like of which I have never seen in my life. Dr. Grant's ego gets boosted. He says, if you want to ride in this car, I would love it. So, he will take you for a ride, you go around. And then while going, you simply boost him up. What a beautiful thing. It must be heavenly to ride this car. Would you like to try? So, you get to ride the car, you get to ride in the car, maybe even a cup of coffee in Ruby Clinic. So, all this is for what? For not treating Dr. Grant. For loving him. So, don't you think love is a very good medicine? So, what is the secret of uh, longevity? Universal compassion. What's the secret of good health? Helping others. Because the germs help you to be here and you help others to live here. So it's very simple, isn't it? So I don't want to talk anything further. I have not given you any medicines, any medicines or any pills. I have given you the strongest pill. Have a clear mind. Where is the mind? Where is the mind? Never mind. <laughs> What is matter? No matter. Science is not the true thing in, in life. Reality is the truth. Reality is far removed from science. Science is an establishment. I always tell people, do you know how to be healthy and happy? If I am a monkey and I know I am a monkey, I accept I am a monkey, 
I'm absolutely happy, no stress at all. <laughs> Supposing I am a monkey, I know I am a monkey, but I behave like a tiger in society. <laughs> I have to just every second because where is my monkey in a sea now? Did you understand that? That is why now I come back to motorcycle. Motorcycle has two wheels, no? The world can run on two wheels. What are the wheels? Satyam. Brihadrita Bukram Vishwam Haren. World runs on two wheels. Satyam, truth. Ritam, ethics. Brihadrita, high ethics. Bukram, applied sternly. So, Raju, you are a good boy. Continue to be a better boy. And the best boy you will be. And your kind of industry will prosper so well if it is ethical. Industry must be ethical. Otherwise, it is a curse on mankind. Industry can be a curse. But ethical industry is a big blessing. So may Bajaj Industries, Bajaj Auto become, you know, it various things, <coughs> be one of the best industries in India and may shine till the sun and the moon set and let all of you love one another. And life running on love is something which is so fascinating. And charity is doing a lot of charity. Charity is a very important part because you have acquired wealth from society. You owe it to society. The wealth is back. And all the Westerners, the other day, the chief of that, what is that? Whatever. He gave 900 million dollars for charity. <coughs> Alfred Nobel was the biggest man who made money by dynamite. One day his factory went up. Why? But Alfred had gone to the bank five minutes before that. So the whole world they thought Alfred is also dead. So the local papers wrote an editorial the next day. The man who made his millions by killing others is also consumed in the same fire. Very good lesson for him. And who was reading the paper? Alfred himself. So he went to his lawyer. His wealth was 550 million Swiss francs. Gave everything to found the Nobel Foundation. So charity is good. Love is good.